Today we've got a classic crazy big integral problem. And in particular, we're gonna evaluate the integral from zero to four of the arctan of the square root of x times four minus x over two, all over the square root of x times four minus x. And we're gonna use a tool that we did in a previous video called the return of big integral. So check that out if you'd like to. That is this following value of kind of a similarly crazy integral. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is take our integral right here, which I'm just gonna write it as the integral from zero to four of something, and we're gonna split it up into the integral from zero to two of that thing, plus the integral from two to four of that thing. And, well, while we do that, we're gonna take this second piece right here, this integral from two to four, and apply a substitution. And the substitution will be u equals four minus x. So let's see what that substitution will do. So of course, that means that x is equal to four minus u. It also means that dx is minus du. Let's also observe that when x is equal to two, that's gonna make u equal to two, and when x is equal to four, that's gonna make u equal to four, or sorry, u equal to zero, kind of obviously. Okay, so let's see what that does for us. So I'm gonna start just by writing, well, the same integrand with our integral from zero to two, so that's just a recopying. Okay, so there we've got that. And now I'll write the you know result of this u substitution. Maybe while doing a couple of things. Notice I pick up a minus sign from the dx, but then I can use that minus sign to switch the bounds of integration. Observe that they'll start from being two to zero. I'd like to switch them back to zero to two. So those are gonna cancel, those two minus signs I should say will cancel each other out. And that's gonna give us the integral from zero to two of the arctan of, let's see, now we'll have the square root of, well, observe that we'll still have u and four minus u over two. In other words, the same thing as we have right here, just with a different variable. And then in the denominator, now we'll have the square root of four minus u times u, and then du. Okay, nice. So that's uh, what we get when all is said and done. And so next up, I'm gonna do a trivial substitution on this second integral. And that trivial substitution is just to replace u's back with x's. And then I'll combine these together into one thing. Notice that I will have to find a common denominator, but that's okay. That's gonna give me the integral from zero to two of the arctan of, well, this kind of crazy stuff. So x times four minus x over two. But then by finding a common denominator and summing things up, that'll be multiplied by the square root of x plus the square root of four minus x. And then our denominator no longer has square roots in it. So the denominator will be x times four minus x. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now we're gonna perform a substitution on this integral. So let's see what that substitution will be. It'll in fact be related to this right here. So we'll set t equal to the square root of x plus the square root of four minus x. But observe we can square t and subtract four and we get this nice expression that t squared minus four is in fact equal to two times the square root of x times four minus x. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Then we can also like take the derivative of our original substitution and move some things around and we'll see that dt by dx is in fact equal to the square root of x minus the square root of four minus x all over two times the square root of x times four minus x. But then in fact, we can solve that numerator and that denominator in terms of t, and we'll get that this is equal to the square root of eight minus t squared in the numerator. 
And then in the denominator, that's equal to two times t squared minus four, as we kind of saw just right above. Oh, actually that's equal to four times t squared minus four based off the fact that this twos double up. But that means that we can write dx simply in terms of dt. So dx will be equal to four times t squared minus four over the square root of eight minus t squared dt. And that gives us our substitution for our dx term that's in here. So, okay. So now pushing all of that stuff in here, we'll see that we have now uh, t times the arctan of, let's see, it'll be t squared minus four, take the square root and divide it by two. That's what's happening inside of this arctan. And then we'll have in the denominator, the square root of eight minus t squared times t squared minus four when all is said and done. And now we've got to worry about how the bounds of integration change. But before we do that, let's recall that we get a four out front from this four right here. And then also this t squared minus four flipped from the numerator to the denominator because of what was already in the denominator. Okay, and then, well, what about the bounds of integration? Well, notice that when x is equal to zero, t is pretty clearly equal to two. And then when x is equal to two, t uh, simplifies down to two times the square root of two. So we're left with something like that. Okay, so now let's start with that on the next board and see where we go. Okay, so here's where we left off on the last board. And now we're gonna do another substitution. And the substitution here will be to set x equal to the square root of eight minus t squared. But observe that that's equivalent to setting t equal to the square root of eight minus x squared. Okay, but then observe that we can calculate dt from this. Notice that dt will be equal to something like minus x over the square root of eight minus x squared dx, just simply by taking the derivative there. Okay, and then, well, let's look at these other parts as well. Observe that if we take t squared minus four, which is something that definitely shows up inside of the integral, well, that's gonna simplify down to four minus x squared. So that's something that's good to keep in mind. Okay, so now let's start substituting all of these parts into the integral that we have up here. So let's maybe bring it over here. We have four the integral of, and we'll take care of the bounds of integration in just a bit. So let's see, t will be our square root of eight minus x squared. And then we have the arctan of, well, we've got this square root of t squared minus four, which turns into the square root of four minus x squared. Okay, square root of four minus x squared all over two. And then let's see, our dt term will give us a minus x. So let's write that here. We have a minus x and then a square root of eight minus x squared dx. So that's our dt term. And then let's see our denominator. So this square root of eight minus t squared is our x. And then our t squared minus four is four minus x squared. So times four minus x squared. Okay, so that's all of the substitutions. And then, well, what about the bounds of integration? Well, when t is equal to two, observe we get x is equal to, well, it's the square root of eight minus four or two. And then when t is equal to uh, two root two, we get a zero here. Oh, but let's actually flip those back by taking this minus sign here. Okay, so now our um, bounds are from zero to two. And now let's see what sort of cancellation we get, which is kind of a lot. We get this x cancels this x, and then this square root of eight minus x squared cancels the square root of eight minus x squared. And then we're left with four times the integral from zero to two of, now it's the arctan of the square root of four minus x squared all over two, 
over four minus x squared dx. But now that's kind of screaming at us to do a classic trigonometric substitution. And that'll be x equals two times cosine theta. So this is maybe semi-classic. Usually you would use two times sine theta. But that's gonna make dx equal to minus two sine theta d theta, and it makes four minus x squared will be equal to four times sine squared. Okay, so let's make all of those substitutions. So we'll have four, and then the integral from, well, let's see, cosine is zero at pi over two, so pi over two up to, well, that's when cosine is one, which happens at zero. That's how we would change the bounds of integration. And then we'll have the arctan of, well, this object in here will pretty clearly be equal to the sine function. So we have sine theta here. And then notice in the denominator, we have four times sine squared theta. And then for our dx term, we have minus two sine theta d theta. But we get some simplification here. This four and this four will cancel. And then we can take this minus sign and change it to a plus if we change these bounds of integration. And then we can take this sign here and cancel this down to just a first power. And notice that in the end, we'll be left with two, and then the integral from zero to pi over two of the inverse tan of the sine function, so sine theta over sine theta d theta. But that's exactly this tool that we have from our previous um, integral video. Well, the twos cancel in the numerator and the denominator, so in the end, we end with pi times the natural log of one plus the square root of two. But then you can nicely check that that's exactly equal to pi times the inverse hyperbolic sine function of one.